Well, good morning and welcome to Virtual Church on a beautiful Thursday morning, the 12th of November. At the moment, the sun's really shining. I hope it stays that way. I think last time I talked about what a wonderful day it was, uh, it started raining about an hour after I'd been recording. Uh, well, last time we were thinking about being at the feet of Jesus. And I hope you found that a good place to be, a place where we can tell our needs and know that the Lord is moved by our condition and knows what we are going through. And today we're going to think about being in the hands of Jesus, that he reaches out to us. He doesn't want to leave us at his feet. He also wants to raise us up. Because he, he doesn't want us to become trapped in the role of a needy person. Uh, he then wants to inf affirm and empower us. So come with me to the hands of Jesus. And let's see what the Lord has for us in this place. Well, as with the feet of Jesus, there, is, there are many vivid stories in the Gospels where Jesus lays his hands on people. You might have a favourite one. One of my favourites came at the end of the story that we had last time. When after Jairus, the synagogue ruler, and his family had thrown themselves at Jesus' feet, and another woman had come up to him in the crowd uh, to touch the hem of his garment, uh, there at his feet, Jesus reaches this little girl and who, who's dying, and in fact uh, by this time she has died, and it says he takes her by the hand and lifts her up. That's what he wants to do for us, take us by the hand and lift lifts her up. Uh, it's beautiful. You might think of stories where Jesus puts his fingers into the ears and touches the tongue of a man who is deaf and dumb, or leading a man born blind by the hand. That's very tactile of Jesus, isn't it? To take him by the hand, because of course he can't see where he's going. And Jesus wants to be on his own with him rather than to, to be to have them both distracted by a lot of uh, people gawking, as they used to say when I was up north. Uh, so he takes him outside the village and then having led him by the hand, he touches his eyes. Well, here's one of my favorite stories, very short. It's from Mark chapter one. And um, it's one of the very earliest miracles. And it says that a man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees, so there he is, he's at the feet of Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Now, the thing that I find very moving about this story, uh, the, the vital importance of Jesus' touch in this story, is that the leper's an outcast. Nobody wants him near. They're not supposed to touch him. In fact, everyone had to socially distance from him. And at least in our, our socially distance, distancing, we don't have to go around saying, unclean, unclean all the time. This, according to Jewish laws, what lepers had to do, declare themselves unclean so other people wouldn't get infected. Does it sound a bit familiar? Well, I guess um, one of the things that the current pandemic might do to us and, and the lockdown restrictions might make us feel that perhaps I am a bit unclean, as we're not allowed to go near each other. And of course, we start to really miss the touch of other people. Some of us haven't touched another human being for the better part of a year now. That's hard. So when Jesus reaches out and touches him, that's healing not just his leprosy, it's healing the scars of years of rejection, which must have eaten him up inside. Everyone else standing back in horror from this uncleanness, but not Jesus. He reaches out to the man and does something that nobody has done 
since his disease was diagnosed. So the touch of Jesus isn't only about manifesting healing. It's also about accepting us, welcoming us, ac acknowledging all the pain that's come when people haven't loved us, have kept us at a distance, have looked down on us. Jesus' embrace reaches out to us and says that he loves us. He doesn't count us unworthy. He doesn't look down on us, or he, maybe he's the only human being who would have the right to do that. The rest of us are all fallen human beings in need of forgiveness because we mess up so much. So this meant the world to somebody who was ill with leprosy. And maybe it means the world to some of us. Other people don't understand us, but the touch of Jesus holds us. People that we love have turned around and hurt us. Jesus' touch embraces us. The healing power of Jesus isn't um, only physical, it's emotional, spiritual uh, as well. Well, there's lots of other things from the Lord's touch, not just healing. In fact, sometimes uh, Jesus healed without touch. And it's very interesting because we often want Jesus to heal us without the embarrassment of one of his people, or hopefully two, because ministry is always better with more than one, because then it's the body of Christ at work, not some individual trying to set themselves up as a superstar or whatever it might be. Uh, so, so Jesus sometimes healed without touching, he just gave a command. Uh, and the interesting thing is the Gospels always treat this as a much greater miracle than when Jesus is actually there and, and does touch, does lay his hands on the person. We, because of our reserved English culture, want healing to be done in the way that wasn't so normal for Jesus, which is looked on as unusual. But what he wants is there to be touch. But that's not the only thing that he does when he embraces us and takes us in his hands. Uh, for example, Psalm 139 mentions the hand of God several times, the hand of the Lord. So it says, uh, God's, through, through God's embrace, through his, his touch, we feel his love everywhere. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. God's love is embracing us now. If only we could see it. A bit further on, it says this, that even if I could rise on the wings of the dawn and run away from God and settle on the far side of the sea, uh, as Jonah tried to do when he ran away, and when, if you remember that bit of virtual church, it says, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. So God's touch guides us in the way we should go. It holds on to us fast, holds us fast when we need a bit of reassurance, when we need a bit of courage, because God is there holding our hand and saying, fear not. So um, that's just two examples. Uh, if you look it up sometime, if you uh, just go through some of the references to, to God taking us by the hand in the scripture, there's an incredible number, and see what they say to you in in your inner being, about you as a person accepted, welcomed, loved and embraced by God. It will do you good to think about those things. And in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, we find some more because we find that, that actually the power of the Holy Spirit is communicated through the laying on of hands. So it's part of the gospel there that having heard a gospel of repentance at the cross and receiving new life through the resurrection of Jesus, people will then go on to receive the Holy Spirit, which is ministered through the laying on of hands of God's people 
the body of Christ. That's who we are. So the power of the Spirit manifested. So what I'm saying then is this. If the feet of Jesus was the place of our need, whatever it might be for, for heartbreak, for forgiveness, for sickness, for, for, for all kinds of wounds that we carry, then the hands of Jesus are the place of empowering. If coming to the feet of Jesus is like coming to the cross, where he bore all our sorrows and paid the price for our sins, then being in the hands of Jesus is the place of resurrection, where his power and life are manifested to us. So I'm going to pray now, and again it's a slightly longer prayer time, as we try to weigh up these things and see what Jesus might be saying to us in our own circumstances and in our own lives at the moment. So let's just be still. And as yesterday, we pictured ourselves at the feet of Jesus and realized that when we truly bring our needs to him, Jesus always responds, he always does, in the gospel stories, certainly. So now let's try and place ourselves in the hands of Jesus. It might, might be a good idea to close your eyes at this point, and particularly if you did those things at the um, feet of Jesus yesterday, then we actually need to come to the next stage. We have to we can't rush it. We can't leave the feet of Jesus until we know that he's heard our need, that he's understood our heart cry. He does understand it, but we need to get it that he's got it. And we can't move on until we feel that he's done. But if if you're in that place, then just join me in visualizing the hands of Jesus. Those hands that have touched lepers, that have embraced outcasts, that have washed the feet of his disciples. They're now reaching out to you. Like his feet, they're scarred hands. They've been broken on the cross. That's how we know he's understood our brokenness. And how we can be sure that he will deal gently with us. Let's imagine him placing his hands on our shoulders. Or perhaps if we have some illness, we might want to imagine him laying his hand on the place where we are ailing, where the pain is. Maybe if What's really ailing us is a broken heart or some resentful attitudes. We might want to just let him lay his hand on our heart or on our head. Let's wait on him in the quietness to receive the power and the love to receive his resurrection life. And please do come back to this and to 
have to wrap up this recording now, but you don't have to stop there. Sometimes we can't rush God. We have to wait in his presence till he's done what he wants to do. And there's also a part of surrender in placing ourselves in the hands of Jesus and just being there until he's uh, expressed his love to us in the way that he wants to. So after this virtual church, if you just want to go back to that place, wherever it was the Lord took you to, and just stay with it a bit longer, that's a really good thing to do. Um, so um, just a, one more notice. I'm actually opening St. Michael's today for private prayer. That'll be from 11 o'clock till 12.30. We're doing this twice a week, so we can allow 72 hours. The next one will be Sunday. We allow 72 hours because then any, any bugs that have been around will all have decayed away. Uh, and uh, also open St Andrews yesterday. And um, that will be open again on Sunday morning. If anyone wants to drop in, that's strictly for private prayer. We're not allowed to have services. We must keep our distance from anyone else who may be in there and sanitise ourselves um, so that we don't, don't pick up or leave behind uh, any nasties. So do make use of that. Uh, see you soon, Saturday morning, in the next virtual church. Until then, God bless you and go with you and keep you in his loving arms. Amen.